Okay, uh, weekly update, October 27th, about AI. There are a lot of updates. There were no major models, but um, a lot of small updates, uh, technology updates. So you see a list, and this is not complete list. And if you look at the number of slides, it's like, as usual, about 30 slides. So this is about me. Uh, Hugging Face LLM leaderboard. Well, it hasn't changed much. It's still close to 2,000 entries. And uh, uh, what I want to say that this 2,000 entries is only a small number of all models on Hugging Face. Like if, if you go uh, uh, for models and just look at the total number, there are not dollar, like 372,000 models on Hugging Face. They are in different categories. You can filter them by name or by type. Like, for example, if you look for text generation models, there are 28,000 of them. And text to text generation, 19,000 and, and so on. So there are a huge number of models which you can use. Uh, Mistral, well, uh, these are French people in Paris and uh, these are two founders, I believe here. There are about 17 people. Uh, they're wearing their uh, corporate t-shirts. Well. I envy them. I wish to be part of the team, frankly. They're, they're great guys. Um, anyway, so here's an interesting uh, uh, publication where they compared the costs of running uh, Mistral 7B with the uh, GPT models, the GPT 3.5 and uh, GPT 4. So what they did, they took a certain number of uh, tokens, uh, input output and they ran them on the same computers and uh, they looked at how long it took and how much you would need to pay. And you see in this situation, uh, Mistral is less than $3, whereas uh, GPT-4 is about $500 for the same number of tokens to process. And uh, this Mistral was a full Mistral without quantization. If you quantize it down, it will be even smaller and cheaper, much cheaper. Uh, now, Mistral 7B is really good model, high quality. It always amazes me how good it performs. It, it, it has 8,000 token contact le context length, which is more than GPT 3.5. GPT 3.5 has only 4K uh, token length. And so it's fast, it's cheap, uh, it's good uh, context length. It, it's great for practical uh, use. Um, now, uh, somebody contacted me and he uh, wanted to use Amazon Cloud to do his work. And I told him, no, no, don't use Amazon because Amazon is very expensive. And th this graph comes from uh, Lambda Labs website. And you see the cost per hour for A100 GPU for three clouds. It's uh, Amazon, Google, uh, Google Cloud Platform, and Lambda. And you see that Lambda is four times cheaper. And uh, here is uh, some information uh, for comparison. First of all, there is a performance matrix of different GPUs. So this is, for example, RTX 3090, which is a very famous uh, video card. You can buy it on eBay for like $700. And on top, you have H100, which is like 30 something thousand dollars right now. And uh, the cost for renting them uh, like for example, one H100 is uh, $2. And this cost of Lambda Labs. In other clouds, it will be much more expensive. Uh, here are some links. I post uh, all this on my GitHub, so then you can follow the links if you want. But uh, it, it shows uh, different prices. Like for example, if you're using Hugging Face, under the hood, they actually use Amazon. So their prices are not very good, uh, but they're convenient, right? Because every, and hugging place, everything in one place. And prices, well, not, maybe not the best, but they're also not bad. Um, anyway, so this is about uh, choosing the server. Uh, next, uh, I want to say a few words about uh, Jeremy Howard. Uh, he is an amazing guy. If you don't know this name, please uh, read about him. Uh, he lives at work in, in Australia. And at some point, he was a president of Kaggle. So he joined Kaggle, like uh, competing in competitions, and then as a partner, and then he became, became a president. Then he stepped down 
I think it was in 2013. He worked uh, together with uh, Chris Lartner, who is famous for creating LLVM, uh, which is low level uh, virtual machine, which is a famous architecture to build compilers. Uh, he created Swift when he worked at Apple. Then he also worked at Google uh, on a TensorFlow architecture. Then on creating compilers for custom chips, for uh, microchips. And then he created his own company, um, um, Modular, and they created their own programming language, Modular, which looks like Python, feels like Python, but it runs with the speed of C and it has special optimizations for matrix operations for deep learning. Maybe at some point everybody will switch to Mojo. I don't know. Uh, Rachel Thomas, uh, she uh, co-founded uh, the website FastAI with Jeremy and they created uh, courses. And these, these are very, very good courses. Like if you go to FastAI and you see these are courses software, like for example here, and uh, this is more than 10 hours. This is part two. Like you, you start from the very beginning and you end up uh, creating a diffusion model. Like if you go through all this and the, the lessons, they have videos and the videos usually is about like 90 minutes. So it's easy to follow. It's a very, very good courses. I highly recommend. Jeremy is extremely talented um, genius in fact. And uh, so uh, he is known for fast AI um, and fast AI is um, using PyTorch. So this is like a syntactic sugar on top of uh, PyTorch and uh, NBDev, NB it's a notebook for Python. So NBDev is his syntactic sugar, sugar to work with the notebooks. Uh, both libraries are very good and uh, uh, I, I want to say a few words about uh, PyTorch uh, itself. Uh, people ask me, well, what runs OpenAI and whatever. So there are two, well, first of all, it's PyTorch, like OpenAI favors PyTorch, although they have mixture of different technologies. Uh, Meta, which is Facebook, of course, uses PyTorch because they created uh, PyTorch to start with. Let me jump to the next slide to show you. So PyTorch was developed uh, by Facebook uh, AI research lab. It's called FAIR, right? Facebook AI research. Now Facebook is renamed as Meta, so it, it's Mayor, <laughs> I guess. But anyway, so uh, they started in 2016. They open sources in 2017. And th this is the original paper from 2019. You see there's a lot of authors. The two main authors are uh, Sumith Chintala and Adam uh, Pashke, I'm not sure how you say it, but uh, this is a group effort. And what, what they did, uh, they took Torch. So uh, Torch was developed in Europe and uh, this was uh, like scripting library using a Lua language, which was running on top of uh, some C libraries for scientific calculations. Uh, here it says in 2002, so it's 20 years ago, was created Torch. It was created in Switzerland and it became uh, very popular, one of the popular tools for deep learning. And then uh, Facebook created PyTorch on top of it and then Torch development moved to PyTorch as well. So the website is pytorch.org. Fast AI runs on top of uh, uh, PyTorch. So PyTorch is faster than Keras. Oh, I haven't uh, told you about Keras. So originally uh, Google had a huge, uh, how to say, advancement or whatever. It was ahead of everybody, right? They got Jeffrey Hinton, they got Google Translate, they created a word to vec model and uh, uh, attention mechanism and uh, transformers. It's all was coming from Google and they had lots of people and they created TensorFlow. But TensorFlow was difficult to work with, very verbose, very heavy. It's like a two-step design. You first need to create a, kind of the schema, the graph, and then you run it. And it's just difficult to work with it. And uh, uh, Francois Collet uh, created a library called Keras, which was like uh, syntactic sugar on top of TensorFlow, which made it easier to work with TensorFlow. And uh, in TensorFlow 2, uh, they made Keras default API to make it easier to work with it. But 
still uh, PyTorch is better because in uh, TensorFlow Keras, you have to shift between them because some things you can do in Keras, some things you cannot. You need to go to TensorFlow itself. Um, it's, it's kind of heavy, it's, uh, it's big, it's, it's difficult to work with. Whereas PyTorch is easy to work with and it's self-sufficient, everything there, huge community, everybody likes it. And uh, that's, it's, yeah, it's flexible, good debugging, huge ecosystem, third party. Hugging Face uh, supports both TensorFlow and PyTorch, but mostly it's PyTorch. All the transformers, which is large language models, are in PyTorch. So OpenAI, favors PyTorch, uh, Meta, Anthropic, uh, which is Claude, right? Uh, PyTorch, Stability AI also. Even Google, you'll be surprised. Like uh, Palm 2 model, which now runs behind BARD, um, it started uh, like training uh, using TensorFlow, but then later they find unit using PyTorch and they released it in open source uh, in uh, PyTorch. So it's uh, open source as PyTorch model. So there are also two languages like Mojo, which I mentioned uh, from Chris Lattner and uh, Rust. Uh, Rust becomes uh, popular, more and more popular recently. So we'll see how it will go. Uh, Next, um, I want to say about uh, ULM FIT, which is a three-step transfer learning for NLP. Uh, I, I spoke about Jeremy Howard, and uh, five years ago, he and Sebastian Rader has published a, a, a paper where they described the three-step uh, process of training the model. You first train it on some generic data, then you find unit or more like domain specific data. You see the full LM is fine tuned on target task data using discriminative uh, fine tuning. And then uh, C, the third step is classifier is fine tuned on the target mask using gradual unfreezing. So this is like a three step process. You can read the article. And this is what everybody is doing. Although recently there was interview with Jeremy Howard where he said that he believes that this approach is wrong. Because what's happening when you go layer by layer, not layer by layer, but step by step, on the next step, you can learn new things, but you suddenly can forget things you knew before. And it's called catastrophic forgetting. And um, to avoid it, you should uh, remove this uh, kind of borders between these steps. And it, you need to do continuing pre-training, maintaining a diversity of data throughout the training process, rather than separate pre-training and fine tuning. So mixing instructional data, exercises, code, and other modalities with gradually curating higher quality data can avoid catastrophic forgetting. So this is, uh, Again, interesting thing. It's a very good interview. I provided the link to this interview here. There is a interview and this is uh, like a transcript of this interview. Uh, so it's uh, a lot of text here. Uh, I, I highly rec recommend actually to spend time and listen and, and read this transcript. Okay, uh, DALI 3 is now available in ChatGPT Plus. I am a paying user of ChatGPT Plus. I'm paying $20 a month. So now suddenly when I click uh, on beta and I see that DALI 3 is available as a beta feature and I can type something like make an image of a winding road uh, going into sky with stars and a figure of a girl in a long dress walking towards stars. And after about a minute of thinking, it created these uh, four images. Um, I think images is pretty good. I mean, this is what I envisioned. Um, I tried other things. I'm amazed at the quality of images and the high resolution of the images. Great tool and very conveniently right there <laughs> in ChatGPT. Okay, improving RAG effectiveness with retrieval augmented dual instruction tuning. This work actually comes from Meta. Meta itself. So this is the original publication. And uh, this is uh, implementation using uh, Lama index, which is like uh, there is a link chain and there is Lama index. There are two similar libraries to work with the large language models. And uh, what they're doing, usually when you have RAG, you have a large language model and you have some sort of embedding model. Usually people just take from the shelf a standard embedding model. 
and use it. But here it's a different approach. They use a retriever model. A retriever is a kind of like embedding model, but it's custom tuned to retrieve a specific like domain specific information. And what they do in this system, they fine tune both large language model and retriever model. So it's not just standard frozen embedding model. This is fine tuning a retriever model on the data which you're storing in your storage. Interesting approach, provide better results. Uh, they, they use a retriever Dragon Plus, which is on Hugging Face, one of the many retrievers. And this is a bird based uh, um, model, kind of standard model. Okay, can large language models really self critique and iteratively improve? Uh, well, valid question, and this is work from uh, University of Arizona, and this is the main person, uh, and uh, there are multiple articles. The main conclusion is negative. So basically they say that autoregressive uh, large language models, and that's the models we currently have, have very limited reasoning and planning abilities. And this will not be fixed by making them bigger and training them on more data. Uh, they may be very good uh, in uh, proposing something, but uh, in all successful cases, you need uh, like a human in the loop or some other system which can help them in reasoning abilities. So they are great idea generators, right? But they need some good reasoner in, in, in the loop. So they can't actually verify uh, what they're doing. Like for me, it was very sad that they came to this conclusion, but they tried many different things because they really, really wanted to see like optimistic results, but unfortunately they didn't. Okay. Uh, yeah, Jan Lecun, and this is his interview with Financial Times recently, and uh, they were talking about a threat from AI. And his conclusions, AI is still dumber than cats. Uh, premature regulation of AI will only serve to reinforce the dominance of big technology companies because they argue that only they can be trusted. And uh, in reality, this is probably the, the worst thing. Uh, the best thing is uh, give AI to community. Um, regulating research and development in AI is incredibly counterproductive. Uh, same arguments were in the start of the internet. Open source models like uh, created by Meta have stimulated competition, enabled greater diversity. Intelligence has nothing to do with the desire to dominate. It is not even true for humans. And if it were true, then the smartest humans uh, wanted to dominate others. Then Albert Einstein and other scientists will have been both rich and powerful, but they were neither. Current uh, large language models just do not understand how the world works. They're not quite capable of planning. They're not capable of reasoning. And there is no question that we'll have machines assisting us and uh, that they may be smarter than us. And the question is, is it scary or is it exciting? So, um, okay. Uh, this is one of many um, publications and uh, showing how to fine tune a model. And uh, this is uh, a couple of young researchers and uh, they took a Mistral 7B, which is a small, good model, and they trained it on 200 uh, pieces of text or like personal notes. And this is a GitHub a Jupyter notebook, which goes step by step, a lot of textual documentation explaining how it's done. And you see it's easy. So it's really easy and uh, uh, she shows uh, before and after and you really see that the model was trained and they used a, a cloud a server to do actual uh, the training and it cost them like $1, <laughs> like, <laughs> really, really cheap. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, so here uh, there are a lot of um, similar links showing how to fine tune a llama model, fine tuning uh, using um, hugging face tools or uh, using QLora, how to do it on your own data, QA LoRa. Uh, this is a little bit different, so let me explain what's going on. So when you fine tuning, you can fine tune the pre-trained weights, right? But uh, there are a lot of weights. So sometimes people use LoRa 
or QLORA when they don't touch the pre-trained weights, but instead they create another matrices uh, to the side and they train those and then they combine them. So you end up having two files. One is the pre-trained base model and another is fine-tuned weights. And then you can uh, use this model by providing it with both files. You see in this case how, how it is done. But, uh, and, and this works and you, you can uh, train, uh, pre-train, uh, I mean, fine tune the model this way. Uh, sometimes people want to, after they trained it this way, so they have two files, they want to combine these files into one. So they want to do merging and people came up with a script uh, to do the merging. So there, there are some very good links here. Uh, I really like this Reddit discussion where a person who did a lot of, you see, 500 LORAs. LORA is this. So he made a lot of uh, fine tuning, hundreds of them. Uh, he explains that uh, most important is data. Data is the king. Like 95% is quality of your tuning data. And he found that uh, he need to go through the data manually, like clean it and the uh, result is like tenfold better. So it's, I, I think it's, and it takes a lot of time, but it, it really, really helps. Okay, uh, JAX. Um, some companies using JAX. What is JAX? JAX is basically like a numerical Python, but it can run not only on CPU, but it can also run on GPU or even TPU. TPU, remember it's a Google chip, uh, to do Very matrix cool. operations. Uh, can you please mute? Okay, I'll mute you. Okay. And uh, uh, so you can easily install it and use it. Uh, JAX now is uh, getting popular. Um, there are other two <laughs> common abbreviations, T5 and C4. T5 is text to text transfer transformer. <laughs> It's a Google uh, model. And C4 is colossal, clean, crawled corpus. So this is a data set of 100 billion words of text. And uh, so you, you'll see it uh, in many different places. And there are also some uh, benchmarks. Uh, I, I just decided to put it here because, I don't know, for generic education, I, I see these terms uh, over and over again. People use them. Okay, uh, this article is uh, uh, describing a RAG, which is uh, uh, a retrieval augmented generation of response, right? Where you store something in the vector database and then you ask the question. And to answer the question, you convert your question into vector, find similar vectors in the database, convert them to text, and then answer based on this retrieved text, right? So here you have the question, you have embeddings, and you have vector database, you have large language model to provide the answer, but you also have some extra uh, facilities to make your responses better, to improve it. So um, you go by, not just by vectors, but you also go by titles, by content, by year. You may create tags, you can create summaries, you use some sort of re-ranking before you provide it to large language model to provide the answer. So um, there are many articles uh, like that. I just like this uh, image in this article. So I decided to make this slide. Okay, uh, flash versus flash attention. Uh, last year, there were two separate uh, publications and they both used the word flash, but they were different. So one is uh, uh, fast linear attention with a single head. And um, they, uh, you know, when you calculate attention, attention is a matrix. So you have quadratic uh, complexity and people try to find approximate methods to calculate it. Uh, and there are multiple uh, works which claim that they achieved linear complexity, maybe. Uh, so th this is one of them. And uh, flash attention is something completely different. Fast and memory efficient exact attention with IO uh, awareness. Uh, I spoke about it last week. The idea here is uh, making attention algorithms aware of input output uh, for reads and writes between layers of GPU memory. So this is like a hardware aware 
<laughs> algorithm and um, it's very common now many many people are using it uh, just you not only you know your large language model but you also know the hardware it's running on specific hardware and you tune them to work better together okay uh, this is uh, yet another example it's called delayed attention right uh, FinSight, Financial Insight RAG. So this is a RAG uh, for financial information. Here it uses uh, Python library Llama index. It uses OpenAI for large language model. And it uses Face, uh, which is uh, fa uh, Facebook uh, vector storage. Uh, it's like a vector database, basically. Oh, Boston Dynamics has... <laughs> okay, so what, what they did uh, here. You see, so this robot now talks to you. They actually use ChatGPT to enable talking and it can uh, walk around, uh, give, give you a tour of the facility, answer your questions and, and so on. So it's, it, it's quite funny. Um, layout PDF reader. Some PDFs have complex uh, structure. They have images, they have tables, they have text, columns. And uh, so this work, they uh, created tooling to parse those PDFs properly, convert them to text, extract information, and it's available. Um, uh, PDF uh, triage, uh, triage, I think. So this is how you prepare patients for the, in the hospital and decide who goes first and so on. So this PDF triage coming from Adobe Research, Condition PDF structure or text for retrieval. This helps the question answering over long structured documents. So it's like pre-processing PDF documents. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Goli, uh, LLM to extract data as JSON or CSV from text using some guidelines. Well, people do different things. Unlearning, this is very interesting. Suppose you're uh, network learned something and now you wanted to unlearn it. Is it possible? And the answer is yes, it's possible. Uh, Microsoft Tora, a tool integrated reasoning agent. So they, they have uh, a regular large language model, but they also have some tools, some computational libraries, some symbolic solvers, and uh, it uses them. So these are several different kind of agents working together and it's got coming from Microsoft. Um, yet another woodpecker. So this is the bird woodpecker. And the way it works is you have your large language model and it uh, makes a mistake, hallucination mistakes, right? It invents something which doesn't exist. It gives you a wrong answer. So what you do then, you use woodpecker and uh, woodpecker is approach. It tries to uh, find, extract, uh, a key concept, uh, form formulate questions, v validate, uh, generate, uh, and then correct hallucinations at the end. Uh, point is that it's post-processing. So you get the response and then you start asking questions about it and correct it. This work comes from China and uh, it, uh, they achieved 30% improvement in accuracy, but uh, starting was 55%, the ending was 85%. I think this is a really huge improvement. And uh, it's uh, with the same model, it's just that they added this process around it, or I would say after it, to, uh, to clean it up. And they say, well, woodpecker cleans your forest and uh, here it cleans your responses and make them more valid. And uh, you can use it with the different uh, large language models uh, because it's all post-processing. Um, Okay, uh, number of employees. Well, I asked ChatGPT, so why uh, number of employees of Goldman Sachs grows? So here you see the chart and it actually grows uh, despite the fact that they fired all their traders. Like um, I remember listening to an interview and the person from Goldman Sachs saying that we had like 500 people traders and now we have like five. So it's 99% of traders disappeared 
And uh, this is the response from ChatGPT, and it says, well, they diversified, like they went into consumer banking and digital wealth management, and they hired different kinds of people, complexity regulation, a human touch uh, for customer service and so on, innovation, new development, geographical expansion, infrastructure and support, non-core functions like human resources training and so on, reskilling of uh, available employees and strategic acquisitions of other companies which also can in, increase number of employees. So ma many factors, v very interesting. I asked, well, what about AI? Will AI reduce the number of employees? And the answer is again, there are many, many <laughs> like, ways to think about it. So there is no clean cut answer to that. Uh, Gemini, uh, Makersuit and Stubbs. So, uh, Gemini is coming, we're all waiting. Um, they promised it will come by the end of the year. So Gemini is supposed to be a large language model, but it's actually multi-modal uh, model, also dealing with uh, sound, speech, uh, images, maybe video, I don't know, music. And uh, it's supposed to, to come. Uh, make a, Google Make Suit is uh, this. Uh, so this is where you can prototype and uh, create uh, your things using using AI. And uh, uh, Stubbs is a visual no-code tool for easily building basic AI prototypes. So it is uh, part of uh, make a suit. Okay, uh, content retriever bird model. I spoke about it before. Here it's a little bit uh, uh, like more verbal uh, description about it. Um, uh, Segmind stable diffusion model. So this is interesting because this model is smaller, like 50 times, 50% uh, 50 smaller than stable diffusion, but it behaves uh, with the same quality. But because it's smaller, it provides 60% uh, speed up. So this is uh, really good and uh, they describe how they did it uh, using knowledge distillation strategy, like when, when they're tra training it. Um, I, I, th I think this is, this is a great achievement, just wanted to mention it. Okay, this is it for today, let me stop.